I was born with blindness and I'm a filmmaker and award-winning film director and video content creator, YouTuber, and maybe hobbyist photographer. <laughs> but this is all possible thanks to today's sponsor, Sony Electronics. Honestly, without them, this video would not have been possible and well, possibly a whole future in this career. In case we're not acquainted, my name is James Rath. I was born legally blind. My vision is non-correctable with glasses or contacts and there's very little that can be done to help improve my vision, let alone bring the world to my eyes. You know, there's things like magnification on our smartphones and on our tablets and computers, but cameras have been lacking in this space, despite the fact that these are just big glorified magnifying glasses and that's what gravitated me towards filmmaking and video in the first place. Although my videos usually have an entertainment and I try to keep lighthearted humor in them, I do want to just take a moment to get a little vulnerable and open up to you about something I've never been able to really even share with my loved ones and friends. There's something I've always been self-conscious about, despite being an award-winning film director, you know, hobbyist photographer, videographer, and you know, a YouTuber. I've always been self-conscious about my videography, my cinematography skills, my photography skills, like me controlling the camera and especially for other people. I've always felt a little bit more comfortable doing it for myself. I could take as many takes as I need. Even when I had my own travel TV show, I was an on-screen camera person. You jump to my perspective in many of the episodes. The truth is I've been self-conscious shooting video for other people because it's never been my forte and I've always been insecure about taking on work for other people and I've declined. A lot of folks who just wanted me to film for them, frankly, out of worry that I'd mess something up. And this is coming from someone who's directed award-winning commercials. There it is, okay. Got that off my chest. Again, as I mentioned before, despite these things just being big old glorified magnifying glasses, a lot of camera companies have not been catering to people who, well, could benefit from seeing the world through a big old glorified magnifying glass. Now, luckily, Sony has heard those cries that I've been making on Twitter for years now, and Sony's the first camera company that is actually doing something about that. So we're here at the Brandywine Zoo in Wilmington, Delaware. This is a notably small zoo, but this is actually kind of special near and dear to my heart because I grew up coming to the zoo, whether it was from field trips or from doing a blind camp in the summertime, and it was an annual trip we'd make. Uh, looking at a viewfinder, I can't read the menus. I can barely make out a blurry uh, viewfinder or composition, but it's usually just enough to set my composition. But with this, when I look through it, I'm getting a clear image. I'm able to read the ISO, the f-stop, I'm able to read the menus. This is the DSC HX99 RNV kit. Quite a mouthful. <laughs> it's because there's two products here. It's the Sony HX99 camera and it's a cutie laser viewfinder. This thing was a game changer for me when I first tried this out. What this unique viewfinder is, it's housing the camera and it's connected via HDMI mini. And through this HDMI connection, it's sending the video signal to the cutie laser and it's projecting the image with a low frequency laser right onto the retina. It's such a low frequency laser that it's not gonna cause harm to the eye. Now disclaimer, this isn't gonna be a solution that will work for everyone. It's everyone's eyes are unique and different and the way this is working may not work for you, but the way it's worked for me has been a game changer. Sometimes I would even find myself using this as a magnifying glass and just zooming in and just getting that image projected right to my retina. Now I really wanted to put this to the test and see if I could appreciate something that I've never really been able to appreciate before. And so I thought, hey, I'm gonna make it up to my younger self and I'm gonna go to the local zoo that I grew up going to. And I'm gonna try to see it in detail I've never seen before using the Sony camera with the cutie laser. Another great usage of this is just being able to magnify into things and getting that clear image to my eye. So my goal, going to the zoo, find five different animals that I can successfully photograph in focus to the best of my ability. Oh, hold on. You got a friend. Oh. Hi. A close-up of a conure's head seen from the side behind a fence, its sharp beak, piercing red eyes, and black and white neck ruff are prominent, reflecting the majestic and powerful presence of the large flying bird. But just being able to see it's white and grayish, almost charcoal-like feathers. What color eyes does it have? I'm curious. Let's see if I can... Oh, it's got like red eyes. Whoa. Fascinating. Dill decided to do a ton of research for me. Just 
to learn some fun facts about these animals. I want to learn more about these animals, something I couldn't necessarily do or comprehend as a kid. So my girlfriend just so happens to be a Trivia Night champion. <laughs> She's the best to take to Trivia Night. You want her on your team. So they have very excellent eyesight and they're, they use it to seek out dead and dying prey. Again, from here, I can see sort of like a grayish blob, a little bit of white, but I can really see its textures and its feathers and its red eyes, which I normally would not be able to see from here, even this close up. But let's head on to the next exhibit. I'm curious what other animals are out today. I wonder sometimes what people in person, like what's going through their head when they see a blind guy walking with a white cane and digital camera in the other hand. If some folks would come up and ask, I'd love to explain it because I think this is such a cool piece of tech. Where do you see him? He is up on top of this rock. Oh, there's a Okay, he was blending in for me, but I, I see him now. A bobcat resting on a rocky terrain with a watchful gaze displaying its wild essence. The bobcat's mottled fur and tufted ears are key adaptations for its hunting lifestyle in North American forests and deserts. It's amazing just like how far away I am from it and how easily it blends with its environment, but I was still somehow able to uh, to see it. And it's, it's just because there's a clear image of it. The HX99 provides quite the range when it comes to zooming. From a wide angle to 30X optical zoom, that's 24 to 720 millimeters. Hit me with a fun fact. Whoa. Yeah, tell me about the Bobcat. Bobcats have more rods and cones in their eyes than humans, making them better sighted at night. It's probably got even more rods and cones than me. Yeah, yeah, you have normal amounts of rods and cones. Oh, I do? Yeah. Although this is amazing and honestly some groundbreaking technology, Sony has also been considering just traditional accessibility features that the blind and low vision community have come to love, like a screen reader and zoom functionality that is rolling out to their higher end cameras. <laughs> The Sony Alpha ZV-E1 screen reader can be enabled from the accessibility settings and allows you to set a desired speed for the speech when navigating menus. Look how handsome you are. I can't. Hey Bill, what's the buzz all about with these bees? Um, they're going extinct, and if bees go extinct, that's kind of it for humans because they're one of our biggest pollinators. Oh. Well, here I was worried about the sun exploding in like 50 billion years or something like that. So as we were reaching the Red Panda, something that I really wanted to see, unfortunately, it was a bit crowded. Although there wasn't a whole lot of animals on exhibit at this time of year, there was still enough of a crowd to block the view of the Red Panda. And many of them were children, so I didn't want to just necessarily get into the way of that. So we went ahead and I decided to go look for the Padu, the Southern Padu. Southern Padu are the world's second smallest deer. They tip the scale at 10 to 30 pounds. A Southern Pudu peers through a wire fence with wide, innocent eyes and small rounded ears. Its thick reddish brown fur and diminutive stature are evident characteristics that enable it to navigate the dense undergrowth of its Southern American forest habitat. Learn about Pudu. What do they see? How do they see? Do they see better than me? Most likely. They have relatively good eyesight, allowing them to adapt to forest understory and identify objects at varying distance. So they have good uh, depth perception. I'll be completely honest. I didn't know what a Pudu was up until uh, this very moment. I'm sure I've come across the animal. I'm sure I've heard the name, but I really didn't know what this animal was. So even just learning something new like that, really great experience to have going to a zoo. Go to a zoo in your 20s, 30s, 40s. As an adult, just go to the zoo. It's so cool seeing their idle animations. A young brown goat with a white patch is sitting comfortably on a concrete slab, looking content with a slight grin on its face, an image capturing the docile and gentle nature. Unfortunately, the capybara is off exhibit. All right, but we were nearing the end of our time here at the zoo and we had to go back around. I had to try to get a photo of the red panda. I needed a fifth animal, right? As we reached the exhibit though, it's still fairly crowded, but people were starting to disperse and I photographed the red panda. But then it started moving and it ran towards the back and so I moved over to the side and well, it had a friend, and I didn't know they had two red pandas. I thought it was just one. Are there two of them? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I know. I just saw the face of the other one. So, I got these two red pandas that are just like interacting and cuddling each other and- Two red pandas in a tender moment. One panda is lying down with eyes closed while the other is resting its chin on the first, showcasing the social aspect of these creatures often seen in pairs or small groups. We got the red panda. I know I definitely got a little vulnerable with you today about my experience with cameras and filming and especially when it came to filming for other people. But I feel more confident than ever, especially as a videographer, a content creator with low vision, with legal blindness, with a form of blindness. I'm very happy and optimistic about the future of photography and videography and just cameras in general for the blind and low vision community because of Sony Electronics. 